Do you make predictable changes to your QuickBase apps on a regular schedule? If so, it's time to automate them. Welcome to QuickBase Junkie. I help QuickBase builders learn fast to deliver more. Creating a scheduled automation to add records daily, weekly, or monthly can make a huge difference. Hi, I'm Sharon, and before we dive in, I just quickly wanted to let you know that you can get more how-tos, free downloads, and access to premium courses over on quickbasejunkie.com. For this demo, I'll be using an app from the App Exchange called the Simple Project Manager, but that's not all. I'm also using my own personal free, yes, I said free, license from the QuickBase Builder program. You can get your very own QuickBase to learn and play to your heart's content using the link in the text below. Now, let's get started. In this automation example, we'll be setting a scheduled automation. That means we don't have to do something to trigger the automation. Rather, it automatically runs based on a schedule we set. The automation I want is that each week, any active project will require a weekly status update. So I want every active project to automatically get a task called weekly status update added at the beginning of each week. So let's go into the automations. I'll choose settings and scroll down to automations. You can also access these automations from any of the table settings. I've already created a few different automations in this particular application, and you can check out those videos as well. But for now, let's start a new automation. This automation will be set to trigger on a schedule. I'll name my automation. I'll call it add a weekly task for status update. The frequency can either be daily, weekly, or monthly. Daily means it'll run every day, Weekly means you can choose which day or days the automation will run. And then monthly allows you to choose which day of the month you want the automation to run, including an option for just the last day of the month in case the day you need to run it falls on the 30th, 31st, or even the 28th. For now, I'm gonna set this to weekly and have it run every Monday. Now I'll add my action. You might be thinking the action I want to perform here is to add a record. And while you wouldn't be wrong, you wouldn't be entirely right either. What I'm actually going to do is copy records. Because I need my task to remain related to my project, I need to copy a task that is already related. So that way I can automatically use that existing relationship. Otherwise, I'll just be creating tasks without any knowledge of which project they should be related to. So here I'm going to copy records. I'll be copying records from my task table. And now I do need to set up some particular filters. Without setting up filters, I'd be basically copying every task that exists every Monday of every week. And that's certainly not what we want. What I've already done before I started recording was add a task to each existing project for a weekly status update. Now this could be done when you are initiating a particular project to set the first weekly status update. And then you can copy that first status update every week from then on. You can even include that initial setup as part of another automation. So you can check out my video on how to add child records to a parent record when you first create it. So what are the filters we want now? We'll start by identifying the record we want to copy. Now I know that I named it with a task name, weekly status update. Now if this automation has been running for a number of weeks, we might have a lot of weekly status updates in there. So we want to choose the latest weekly status update. In order to do that, I'm going to choose the date created is on or after the date of seven days in the past. So that way I can pick up that record that was just created seven days ago as this automation continues to run on a weekly basis. 
and then I can continue to add additional filters as necessary. For this example, let's take the project status and say it's not equal to the value on hold, right? I don't wanna be creating any weekly status updates requirements when the project is on hold. You could also include perhaps things like canceled or completed. That way you're not continuing to create those tasks that will never actually be completed. With those settings in place, I can now think about what do I actually want to have copied from this record that we've filtered down to into my new task. The destination table will be tasks. Now these don't have to be the same table. You can take information from one table and schedule it to copy into another table just as easily. I'll set my task name. Here again, I'll type in a value and I'll actually just use that same weekly status update title. And then very important here, I wanna make sure that my task remains connected to my parent, right? That's why we're doing the copy record here. So we're gonna copy the related project from a value in the record. So what it's doing here is saying, okay, I've filtered down to those particular tasks to copy, and I'm gonna copy the related project that's related to any individual task onto the new one. Great. So we've got that all set up. Very important, all of this filtering and narrowing, make sure you take the time to think about this. Even set it up in a practice quick base so that way you know that you're not gonna be creating all sorts of additional records that aren't necessary and really confuse some of your users. So test it out, narrow down, get very specific on what it is you want. Before I leave, you could also add additional comments down here on the left if you wanna provide a longer narrative of what's happening and why. But for now, let's go ahead and click save and return to our application. Now I'll have to come back to you in just a day or so as soon as that automation runs because it is a scheduled automation. I can't just show it to you by uh, initiating a trigger, but with the magic of video, I'll be right back with the results. All right, we are back. Our automation has run and so we can check out the results. Before we head over to the task table to see our new weekly status update, I do wanna point out one thing. Notice the record here for finance system upgrade. It happens to be on hold. And if you recall from our automation, we set anything on hold to not get that weekly status update record added. Now let's head over to our task table. Now on our task table, we'll scroll all the way here to the bottom and you'll notice we have weekly status updates for a number of items. These first five are the ones that I previously added, the ones that we made a copy of. However, these next four, well, these are the ones the automation automatically added for me. These were added around 4 a.m. Let's take one more look at that automation and some of the additional options that you have when adding automations. You see the automation that we just ran for add a weekly task for status update, along with some others I previously added. Notice the run count in the last seven days. You can also see any errors that have occurred in the last seven days, as well as disable the automation, delete it entirely, or make a copy, that can come in super handy. Before we wrap up, I do wanna give you an alternative method to creating an automation that is similar to this one. After recording the main section of this video, I realized I might get some questions around why I chose to copy the task to a new task as opposed to just copying some details from the parent that could then be used to create the child task. Well, there's a reason for that, but I wanted to show you what it would look like if we did the exact same process, only instead of copying from the task table, we copied from the projects table. We'd only need to filter to those that are not on hold, 
And then in the task itself, we would set the task name and the related project, which would be equal to the parent's or the project's record ID. We wouldn't have to filter to the latest weekly status because we're copying from the project and not the task. However, if we wanted to include any other information that might be on the task record, such as the person who was assigned to the previous weekly task, we wouldn't be able to access that information. So it really depends on what you want to include on that final record. If the information resides in a child table, then I recommend the method we went through. However, if that information is really readily available on the parent, it might be simpler just to use that information. It's up to you what works best for your particular automation, but I wanted to make sure to close the loop and share this additional option with you as well. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and subscribe using the link below. You can also drop me a comment and let me know what you thought and what you enjoyed the most. And then head over to quickbasejunkie.com to grab one of those free downloads. <laughs> Bye for now. Using the link below. Using the link below. Bye for now.